So we generally have a no betas policy here on Distro Delves, but I occasionally bend that policy and allow betas to sneak onto the show. And Deepin 20 is a special case because folks have been asking me to cover it for a while and Deepin typically has a pretty long drawn out release cycle. Starting with the good old installer, it's unique just like most things in Deepin. It's one of those installers where you don't really have to set anything up until post install, so like a anti Calamares installer. And the Deepin installer is one of the more remarkable ones being pretty, simple, and quick. I did notice that it reserved like 10 gigabytes for recovery and another 10 gigabytes for swap. That's a massive swap file. After reboot, we drop into the distro and set up the user account and time zone and that's it. <laughs> no updates or networking stuff, just user and time zone. And then after tuning the system for what felt like ages, the deep and welcome app pops up and it's like a movie sort of thing. There's options to configure the desktop mode and icons, but we'll save that for a little bit later on. The desktop itself felt sluggish though, like there was stuff running in the background or something was caching, maybe IO, I don't know. But I'm not connected to the network yet. A fresh install of Deepin weighs 5.5 gigabytes, but notice that it says only 8.5 gigabytes are available. Now that's because it breaks the file system into a bunch of different parts, like how there's a 56 gigabyte available data partition and the Deepin desktop is using about one gigabyte of memory here at idle. And I noticed that there were two different Wi-Fi applets in the tray, as well as an icon for ethernet. Now this board actually has onboard Wi-Fi, but the antenna is bad, so it has really short range. I usually wind up using the Wi-Fi dongle, but it doesn't usually show both as an option in the tray. I had to connect to the network so that I can install NeoFetch, and in NeoFetch, we can see that this is Deepin 20 beta, running kernel version 5.3.0. The desktop environment is Deepin and the window manager is Kwin. So yeah, this is Deepin. What do you guys think? I see that they're going for like a rounded feel for everything. It reminds me a bit of OS X 10.3 Panther. Now back to the sluggish feel I was talking about earlier, some of the applets wouldn't load or launch at first, like I had to click them a few times and then of course it popped open too. And much like how there's two Wi-Fi applets, there's also two keyboard applets, one for settings and one for launching the onboard keyboard itself. Now there's a workstation switcher activities thing at the top, but the little preview images, they're heavily compressed. If you look, you can see artifacting when I move things around. It's kind of odd. And the default app launcher is a GNOME Shells activity clone, but you can configure it so it shows categories or turn it into a Windows 7 start menu sort of thing. Now in the way of settings, there's a cloud account thing, which I didn't test because I don't want to set up an account for it, and the regular suspects like display settings, default application, network, sound, and so on. Now something that the Deepin desktop has been known for is the ability to choose themes on a per application basis, which is something that Pantheon Desktop by Elementary OS has been working on for quite some time. Deepin has had this feature for a while, and it's really cool but there are some caveats to it, which I'll show you in just a moment. Now there's a refreshed icon theme for Deepin 20 and it looks all right, but I think I prefer the classic icons a bit more. And Bluetooth took forever to connect and when it did, I didn't see any integration for it. Like, you know how I've shown on KDE, you can play back music, show your network connection, microphone, that sort of thing. I didn't see any sort of integration like that for Deepin. The desktop panel can be customized quite a bit and the options are canned, so like rather than Dragging and dropping the panel to a specific location on the desktop, you select left or top or bottom and that sort of thing. You can of course enable and disable applets and set the panel to one of two different modes, fashion and efficient. Both are pretty cool, but I like fashion mode the best. Most of Deepin's apps come from the Deepin desktop itself, but there are a few apps that don't, such as Simple Scan, which actually detected my scanner and set it up automatically. That's pretty awesome. My printer was detected, but I had to manually add it. Now, notice that SimpleScan doesn't have the option to set a theme or anything like that. That's because it's not a Deepin app. That's SimpleScan from GNOME, so a GTK app. You can set the global theme, but it's not as integrated as the others, like you can't set an application theme for it. But the rest of the Deepin apps look pretty good, and they're pretty high quality from a polish point. Now, the file manager is great, but networking didn't really work at all. I'm unsure if this is a beta thing, but there's a section called computers in LAN, but the only option in there is Windows shares, and that didn't even work. 
The dialogue that pops up is broken. It has two different buttons, like close buttons and then big button in the middle that just says confirm. You can share folders from the file manager, but I didn't see them on my network, so I'm assuming that it's not set up right. Everything works swimmingly in the external devices and media tests. There's EXFAT support. All of the media formats open just fine with no issues on media playback. I, well, actually, the MP2 audio file wanted to open in Deep and Draw, but it behaved fine after I told it to open in music. And a somewhat interesting thing about the movie player is that even the corners of the videos are rounded. That means that a tiny portion of the video being played back is actually cut off. But I think it's kind of a cool effect. I really dig the rounded corners. And in the way of app support, Deepin is based on Debian proper, so Etcher won't open because of that Debian mounting thing. And there's no flat pack or snap support out of the box, but my Lightworks Deb opened just fine and installed. I didn't test anything, but I'm pretty damn surprised it opened at all. Now, the Deepin store is an odd beast. It's definitely tailored towards a Chinese audience, which is fine, but it doesn't seem to use much from the Debian repos. So it has a huge wealth of apps and stuff, stuff that you wouldn't normally see in other distributions, but it all seems to be coming from Deepin's own repos. So, like Brave, I thought that it was a snap or something like that, but it's using apt to download it from somewhere else. Again, this is fine, but it can get a little confusing if you ever want to use the terminal to install something. So, for example, I can't find Steam in the App Store. So I use the terminal to find it, and it's there, so I go to download it, and it's somehow downloading over the App Store downloading Brave. But then it fails because my CLI app took the lock file away from the store. I'm not really sure, but it's odd. The app store itself is fine, if not a little slow in rendering and download speeds. Now switching gears to the gaming and performance stuff, Mango HUD installed just fine and Deepin20 appears to default to the AMD GPU driver, which is pretty cool. Considering my R370 technically isn't supported by it and can only use the Radeon driver, despite the AMD GPU driver being better all around, I don't know. Either way, this is cool, but Mango HUD doesn't show the GPU usage percent for some reason. And the performance in heavy OpenGL games like Metro Last Light here is just kind of meh. I feel like with a graphics card like this, 30 frames a second should be attainable, but it seemed like 20 frames a second was the sweet spot. Wasn't any stuttering or major frame drops though. Now I've talked about Mango HUD's accuracy before and I'm really not so sure how trustworthy it is because Delver here is reporting 60 frames a second but you can see when I turn the frame rate drops pretty bad to maybe 45 but Mango is claiming 60 frames pretty much all around. It could be that Mango HUD isn't refreshing the counter fast enough but those dips should show up in the frame time graph so I don't know. And I wanted to go out on GTA 5 in this video, but nope, card still won't launch it. Hopefully by the time Distro Delves ends in October, we'll be able to find a distro that can run this because I really want to compare the performance to my Nvidia card. This is Mountain Blade Warband, and again, I feel like Mango HUD is over-optimistic about the frame rate. When it says 40, I feel 30 behind the mouse and keyboard. It's still playable, of course, but this isn't quite the performance I expect from my R370. Now Deepin20 is still in beta of course, and it has a few issues it needs to iron out, but overall, the desktop experience is second to none. This is the nicest, best polished distro that I've ever used. Now Deepin isn't something I would ever use personally, but once it shores up the few deficiencies it has, I would absolutely recommend this to new users. The desktop itself has some performance issues, specifically around responsiveness. The deep and store could use a bit more polish and localization, and the networking situation just needs to improve all around. But honestly, it's pretty damn impressive how nice it is in its current state. Up until this point, I think Linux Mint was probably my go-to Linux beginner's desktop, but once Deepin20 is stable and fully released, I think it might be time to switch it up.